What's up guys, DV here with another video tutorial series. This time it's about installing a Core i5 CPU in a desktop computer. So to get started, we're going to set up our workspace using some like foam that comes commonly on TVs and monitors to protect the screen. Set up a workspace on top of my desk to put parts on so they don't get scratched or to scratch the desk. So to get started, let's pull out the computer case. If you already have an existing rig that you're upgrading, or unpack the new case and we're going to get it prepped to, uh, to insert the new processor and motherboard. So our computer here right now has an AMD processor and 6 or 8 gigabytes of DDR2 RAM. So what we're going to do is remove the old components and we're going to put in the new ones. So we're going to get started here. Uh, you can see inside the case. Sometimes I like to use a flashlight, like here. You can kind of see in the corners. I think it helps with the video a little bit. Um, but you can see here we've got the hard drives. We have the uh, screwless 3.5-inch uh, drive bays and 5.25-inch bays uh, in the computer. And then we had another setup over there by my monitors uh, with more foam so that we can safely put down the components like the video card, PCI slots, and the old motherboard without scratching anything. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the GeForce 9800 GTX graphics card from the motherboard and place it down gently on some foam. And now I'm going to remove my Firewire PCI card and also put that down on like the foam there uh, just to protect the parts while I upgrade the motherboard and stuff. So you want to go ahead and disconnect everything from the power supply. So all the uh, serial ATA ports, um, some of the 24 plus 1 uh, power supplies for the motherboard, the CPU fans, the chassis fans, all that stuff you want to take off the motherboard, um, and the USB and front panels, uh, cables, all that stuff you want to take off the motherboard so that way when you remove it, uh, the cables are obviously not taken with it because you're going to need those to connect your new motherboard to all the components and to the chassis and everything uh, on your new motherboard which will support the Intel processor. So we're going to go ahead here, remove the screws from the motherboard and gently lift it out holding only the edges, being careful not to damage any of the RAM slots um, or the CPU fan or anything like that because we're actually going to reuse this in a, uh, in a slim tower computer we already had. So we're going to go ahead and set this down on some more foam there, very gently, and we want to be careful with that. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and prepare the case for the new motherboard. We measured ahead of time, which is very important to do before you order uh, your motherboard, because you want to make sure it's actually going to fit instead of having to upgrade the case to a different model. Like we have a, a ATX uh, slash MATX, like micro ATX, uh, so our, our boards fit. So we want to go ahead and unbox all of the new the new uh, stuff. I have to remove that IO shield panel. So you can see here we've got our new motherboard, which is an ASRock Pro P55 motherboard, which supports Windows 7 64-bit, Core i7, and Core i5 CPUs, and up to 6 gigabytes or up to 16 gigabytes, excuse me, of DDR3 uh, dual-channel RAM. We have our quad-core Core i5 processor with 2.66 gigahertz, which you're expecting to overclock to over 4 gigahertz. And now here we have 8 gigabytes of OCZ uh, DDR3 1600 megahertz uh, RAM that we're going to put into this computer as well. So here we have our parts. It's not a lot because we already had the case, the power supply, and the hard drives and DVD drive. But um, yeah, this is the core components, and this is what the tutorial is going to show you how to, how to set up in your rig. So... Um, and we have our graphics card there. So we're going to go ahead and open up the motherboard box. You can see we've got the IO shield panel, some instruction manuals. We don't really need them. Um, we've got some IDE cables and four uh, serial ATA cables and one hard drive power supply cable, which is helpful. Now you can see underneath that layer of foam, we've got the actual motherboard, which is wrapped in an anti-static bag with some more foam underneath. Um, so you want to keep it in there sometimes it's helpful to actually um, put the motherboard on top of the bag until you're actually ready to get started. Here you can see some of the other parts we have for the, for the rig, which includes uh, fan splitters, uh, fan screen uh, mount, some uh, thermal grease. We have the old motherboard box here, the GeForce 9800 GT card. Uh, we have some motherboard screws. We have the 8 gigabytes of RAM here. We only have one of the 
the packaging for one of the RAM modules, but you get the idea. We have our AMD um, X4 processor, Venom 2, and we have our 580 watt power supply over in the corner there, which is actually Core i7 compliant. So it works with our AMD Phenom, as well as our brand new Core i5 CPU. Here we have the new motherboard. Um, you can see here the CPU slot. It's important not to bend any of the pins for that CPU because it will render the board useless. So make sure you keep that protective cover on until you're ready to install the CPU. You can see here we installed the IO Shield panel. Now we are unwrapping the RAM modules and we're going to get them installed on the board as well. Pay attention to the instructions. Make sure you open the right um, the right RAM modules because some of them it'll like the get the white ones have to be paired together for uh, dual channel and the blue ones. So if you're only installing two modules, they have to be in the right color. So which you can consult the documentation for your specific motherboard to figure out which uh, modules you want to use. So we're gonna go ahead and take the DIMM here, and we're gonna hold it by the edges very carefully. Make sure you line up the um, the opening there with the slot that's actually in the module there. Make absolutely certain that the uh, indents are lined up as to not crack the motherboard or the RAM modules. Here you can see that it's incorrectly lined up because the indents won't line up. But here when you apply pressure, the uh, end clips will come together and secure the module in place. Okay, so there you go. You have the one RAM module in place and now we're going to install the second one. A total of 8 gigabytes. Uh, just a side note here, uh, when you're installing RAM modules, if you have anything over 3.5 gigabytes, you're going to need a 64-bit operating system to be able to recognize and utilize that extra RAM. Um, that's just a side note there. Uh, you want to be mindful of that when you're building your system. Uh, usually you can get a 64-bit disk uh, for free or very cheap from Microsoft or from your computer manufacturer, and a lot of the disks will include both. Now you can see here we have the different graphics card slots for SLI or Crossfire, and we have the PCI slots. We have the SA, uh, the serial ITA ports there. They're on the side, which is kind of annoying to install. You got to be kind of careful. Um, and then you have the USB, FireWire, HDMI, uh, audio ports, etc., and Ethernet, Gigabyte Ethernet. So um, tune in for the next section: section installing uh, the CPU and the rest of the parts. Rate, comment, subscribe. Thanks, guys.